Shut up and sit down. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Third Shift. This is episode 12. I'm your host, Matt. With me, as always, of course, is my co-host, Eric. Eric, Hello! <laughs> Eric, how's this week treating you, man? Oh, goodness gracious. I am the man of many hats. Yes. I've been a warlock this week. I have been a blonde-haired chick this week. <laughs> I have been a ice-hatted, capped-headed man named Calvin this week. And you haven't oh, even gosh. played any games. I mean, that's just real life. Yeah, right. That's yeah. No, no, no. I don't make no mistake. This is in video games. I'm also a mage for any of those you don't know. So yeah. yeah. No, nope, no. Nope. Been playing a ton of games all week. It's just been grind, 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 grind. Mm -hmm. uh, my poor kids have just been sitting in my lap going, "Daddy, what are you doing?" <laughs> it's been ridiculous. So uh, just trying to catch up and everything. Mm -hmm. But uh, this last weekend we sat around the house, did a bunch of nothing, and it was everything I thought it could be. Nice. Really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. It wasn't one of those ones where sometimes you, you think that's what you want, and then mm -hmm. at the end of the weekend you're like, I should have gone and done something. I really no. wish I'd seen a movie or something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. no, this one was perfect. Did nice. nothing, ended, and went, yeah, that was what I needed. Mm -hmm. Great. So, yeah, pretty damn good, man. What about you? Well, for me this weekend... Uh, our buddy Player X, of course, invited me out. He's like, hey, I got this uh, this hard cider I like to drink, and they bottle it down you know, down around the Detroit area. You want to go with me? I was like, yeah, sure, I'll go down there. So we went down there to this winery, cidery, brewery type deal, and they had this, it was like a little like tasting room that we're, they were in, basically. Like, it's a little kind of like mini tiny bar. And so, you know, we, we sat there, hung out, had a couple beers, and, you know, had a pretty good time, but it wasn't like a big you know, thing. I probably expected like, you know, more like a brewery tour kind of stuff like that. But it was just, you know, this little room. So like I said, it was fun. But on the way back, we're driving around and out of the corner of my eye, I see, what's this on the attraction sign for this next highway exit? Eternal Brewing? What's it? Hey, there's a brewery over here too. Player X is just like, hey, want to go? Yeah, sure. Why the hell not? So we pull off this random brewery out in some random town at the end of a strip mall. We go in. Hey guys, it's our second year anniversary. Why don't you come on down? We got six b bourbon barrel aged beers we're opening up today. Just fucking go nuts. It was perfect. Sitting in there drinking some beautiful bourbon barrel aged beers. I was in heaven that whole time, man. Even Player X, who is a, a picky beer drinker, found a beer he could drink, found a cider he loved, got a whole growler of that. I got a growler and a mini growler waiting for me in the fridge. I, it was It was beautiful. Man, oh man, good times. Yeah. And then all the rest of this week, it's just been uh, playing a bunch of Battleborn and then just work, gearing up, and getting ready to work the weekend, too. Oh, boy. Very exciting. Mm -hmm. I'll be there with you. Yep. Can't wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> also this week, of course, we had our Talented Tuesday. This week's subject was Kelvin. I thought we all did a cool job. Danny came back to competition, so we actually had some decent artwork in there this time. Hooray! <laughs> But yeah, I thought we, we we all had some fun with that one. Oh, yeah. I enjoyed mine. Um, it took me, admittedly, uh, quite a bit of time to figure out that stinking idea I had. Mm -hmm. uh, I, for a minute, I really thought I was going to be uh, uh, pooping the goose because you stole <laughs> my uh, general idea with yours. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I, I know you know I got so excited with my idea that the day you said, hey, it's Kelvin, I spent a decent amount of time that night drawing out my little five-page, five-panel comic. Just, I don't know, it just, it just struck me. I'm like, yes, Kelvin needs to make somebody get hit by a truck. Yeah, okay, that's, that's just going to happen. Well, that just makes sense. Yeah, of I course. I appreciate that. <laughs> and, of course, coming up this week, our, our subject is Raina, my girl, my favorite, as always, you guys can check out the preview versions of all of our Talented Tuesday artwork on the Twitter account and on Facebook as well. And for the full versions, you can check out our Instagram. Heck yeah, get on over there and check them out and make sure if you uh, you know, have the ambition and the gumption to do it, draw us some pictures and see if you can compete. If you, th if you think you can draw better than us two scrubs, I mean, I mean it'll take a lot because we're pretty good. Mm-hmm. And, no. uh, and if no. you if you can even get up to our particular skill level, you got to beat Danny. So I mean, yeah, good luck. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah whatever. <laughs> <laughs> also this week, 
Uh, they went ahead and released uh, some shift codes mm-hmm. for uh, keys for Borderlands the pre-sequel, as well as, just recently, Borderlands 2. Yep. So if you guys haven't got those, as usual, we're going to put those down in the uh, notes below and, uh, and on, our, on our website and all that good stuff. So check it out. Yes, indeed. And to top that off, today's stream had a Boulder Golden Oldie skin. You can find that also in the show notes below or at any of our sites and other means of uh, communication. So make sure you head on over to all those designated areas and pick up them codes because you guys will love them. Hashtag Golderskin. It is pretty impressive. That's right. And speaking of picking things up, mm. this last weekend we had the Loopocalypse yep. and the Quad XP weekend. Mm. So I would love to hear about uh, you guys' stories with that because as for myself... One mm. night of plan, I freaking leveled up two characters all the way to 15. Mm. Ended up getting eh, not too many legendaries, but a couple. Mm. And that was just in, what, three hours of playing? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it was ridiculous. That quad XP, man, was that was rocking it. Mm. Personally, I didn't notice it that much because I think I was working on two pretty high-level characters anyway. I had Thorn at 13 and I think Ombra around 13 or 12. So it was about that time where the XP kind of starts slowing down. Now it's like, oh, it wasn't that great. Uh, but then the last couple days playing without that quad XP and it moves like half a millimeter around that circle. It's like, oh, yeah, quad XP was amazing. <sighs> but yeah, I picked up a couple new legendaries. I think I got about three or four out of the story missions and then I finished Ombra's lore so I got her legendary too. So a, d- a decent haul. I got a few different skins and taunts out of the packs. I don't know. Did you manage to uh, find a taunt or anything there, Eric? Oh, man. Did I get anything? I don't know. Let me... I got to really think about this, you guys. Mm, I don't okay. know. Uh, I opened uh, 18 LLC packs, I think it was. <laughs> I got my taunt, suckers. Oh, it came down from the heavens in a beam of light. It finally came I to you. I am the proud owner of Phoebe's Spin to Win, boys and girls. Congratulations. I can officially retire. It's been great. And I right. love you all. Been nice doing this podcast with you. See you later. Fantastic. Eric. You know what? Your next host will probably be much better than me. <laughs> so uh, c- congratulations to you. <laughs> Oh, God. Oh, yes, awesome. I got my spin to win, and it was on the second to last pack nice. that I bought for that LLC little grinder. Mm. Oh, and if you guys could have been flies on the wall, the swearing and the cursing, <laughs> it was happening. It was real. <laughs> I believe it. It was fantastic. I had a good time. I didn't get to play as much as I wanted to, mm. just because, as I told you guys in the beginning, I was a man of many hats this past week. Yeah. But uh, I enjoyed what I did get in there and uh, look forward to some more of their events. Nice, yeah. All right. That was this week for us, pretty much all in a big extended size nutshell. Uh, a couple of pieces of news as far as Gearbox is concerned that dropped today as we're recording this, Thursday the 29th. Uh, there was an article on Kotaku claiming that from an inside source, I'm using quote fingers, claim that they totally knew, again, quote fingers, that Battleborn would be going free to play in a couple months and, you know, laid out all these plans that this quote finger source knew all about. And a couple hours after that came out, Randy Pitchford jumped on Twitter and said, it's not going free to play, at least in the sense that we all are accustomed to, like a League of Legends or I think the way Evolve went free to play. He was saying they're only free quote fingers version was going to be thinking about doing a trial version where you can buy the retail version and all the dlcs out of that you know he made it sound like like i said not free to play but like here's a free trial version i don't know if it would be time limited if there'd be only a certain number of story missions only a certain number of pvp modes you could play but he said Those plans were like months and months and months off. They hadn't even wanted to talk about them yet, but since obviously this free-to-play discussion keeps coming up and there was an article about it saying that it was definitely going to happen, he wanted to lay that out there, that that trial version is in the works, but not a free-to-play version. And again, no real details on that because he said their, their plans for that are so far out that we passed when all the DLCs hit even, is what he said. Well, to speak briefly on it, um, what I envision, it's a lot like what World of Warcraft does. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, You can yeah. get to level 20 
without paying for anything, mm-hmm. and you have limited access. You can go around and do things. You can play a couple of things, but you can't send mail. You can't use the auction house. So basically, mm-hmm. I envision something much like that. You can do an incursion map. You can do one or two stories, mm-hmm. and you got probably the base eight, nine characters or something, and that's, that's it, unless you purchase the game. I was going to say, especially, like you said, the level cap, that will keep you from getting so many characters if you cap your command rank out at like 20 or something you don't get all the you know the later characters exactly so that's that article and then another one i saw this morning i think it was somebody on facebook linked to a eurogamer article saying that the uh the remastered version of bulletstorm which came out quite a few years back uh is going to be that's going to be dated for 2017 and it's going to be published by gearbox you know, there's there's been a lot of talk about the Gearbox publishing arm recently, and so that's kind of a you know a higher profile release that they're going to be working on. Very nice. Um, that game came out a long time ago now. My yeah. memory of it is very vague. I remember I think it did pretty well, mm-hmm. um, but it kind of slipped under the radar, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, it definitely slipped under my radar. I mean, I've I saw a couple of video reviews of it, and I was like, oh, it's kind of like a combo based stylish shooter type thing sounded like fun i always told myself i'd pick it up when it had like a price drop to 20 bucks or something but then by that time there were so many other games and it just like you said it flew under the radar got lost in the pile i never got around to it it seemed very much like a gearbox sort of game so i'm not surprised that they're going to pick it up and publish the remastered edition Mm -hmm. Uh, i think the closest thing i could think of like it was would be something like bayonetta honestly that's kind of the vibe I got, except for the fact that you're just shooting normal guns mm. at a very fast pace. And I would say the only other thing that I have in my experience to equate it to was a game called The Club that I picked up on Xbox 360. I think it was on PS3 as well. It's kind of like a combo-based shooter. Like you'd run through like a warehouse area, and if you picked up stylish kills, if you like shot some targets that were on the wall, it would. It was kind of like a just like a score attack game. You do fancy fun things, get your score up high, and if you got the max score, then you know you could brag on the leaderboard. Oh, that's right. It did implement that whole score mm-hmm. system when you were uh, flipping around and doing all sorts of craziness. Yep. yep. Yeah. But looking forward to it. Be another one to uh, pick up and you know talk about at a later date and time. Yeah, definitely. Again, that's not something that's being worked on specifically by Gearbox. They're just publishing it. It's being worked on by some other team, but mm-hmm. still under the Gearbox umbrella. So we got to mention it. That's right. That's what we're here for. That's right. Yeah. So moving on to the battle plan, uh, it was pretty bare, but that's because of mm-hmm. the gigantic stream and all the information they uh, yes. wanted to throw at us You know, a little bit later. Mm-hmm. So <clears throat> one of the things they did mention was they had a little hot fix. Um, there's been an issue with disconnections while playing Ernest. Well, guess what? There won't be that problem anymore. Uh-huh. It shall be fixed. So... Whilst I never had the issue because I don't play him, hey, mm. for those that did, fantastic. I, I never noticed any Ernests on my team disconnecting with any regularity, but apparently somebody somebody had that issue, so now they won't anymore, like you said. That's right. Yeah. And then in the community spotlight, they went ahead and mentioned a website called uh, battlebornmatch.com. Mm. And I guess it's a group of guys created this website, so you can go in, put in your character information, where you're at, what kind of players you like to play and mm. modes you like to play, etc. And then it'll match you with other people that are available at those times and whatnot who mm. uh, can basically make your team better. It's just a way to coordinate. Um, so you can play with other people at the times you want to play mm-hmm. and hopefully have some good times. Yeah, I popped on there for just a quick second to see what it was all about. I like that you were able to put in your preferred character play style. Like, I like playing supports. So, okay, we need a support guy. We have everyone else. This guy will do, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, it takes away that moment where you're all staring at your screens going, oh, what are they going to pick? So. Mm-hmm. You know, let you come in with some gentlemen and ladies who are willing to play, and then they already know, hey, we picked him because he loves support, mm-hmm. so pretty much we know he'll pick a support character. Yep, absolutely. Exactly. And then uh, they also did some more lore, as promised, yep. and they made mention that, you know, we've been wanting to eat this stuff up more and more, which I I do, and I mm-hmm. wish, on a side note here before I say what it was, 
I really wish they would take this lore and not only, of course, put in the battle plans, mm. but when it's done, put it somewhere on the website in a lore category something. Yes. And just basically, yeah, compile this all because I'm finding that more and more these tidbits are all over the place, be it YouTube mm. videos, battle plans, you know, on the website itself. Mm. I want it in a compiled area so I can go in and actually read everything to date for mm -hmm. every character, area, whatnot. Yeah, I, I definitely agree with that. Having a like a lore encyclopedia section on the website would just be awesome, you know. Click on it, it would take you to the and then you could click on the factions, learn about the factions. You know, I know it would take resources to do this, but make it like a Wikipedia style where when a character's mentioned, you can click on them and then it goes to their page. You can read all the lore about them, all that kind of stuff. Like like I said I'm sure there would be a lot of work going into that, but at least if it's just somewhere on the website where you can go and see, even if it's just, you know, Battle Plan 21's lore is here, just have it all in one space so you can read it. Exactly. So something to look at, something maybe hopefully Gearbox can take a peek at and fix up a little bit. Yeah. But anywho's, uh, it was generate lore, and it was mainly based around Ombra, but it mentioned a few others in there as well. Mm -hmm. Uh a lot about the sisters, which is what Ombra was part of. So if you're interested, make sure you go give it a read. It was very, very awesome, mm -hmm. and it definitely made me appreciate uh, Ombra and her little situation a little bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was it was definitely a good chunk of lore, too, like six, seven paragraphs full of, full of stuff. Also, they had a picture of Mission 46 cosplaying as Ombra for, from, I think it was, maybe it was PAX or a, a convention a little while ago, but in case you hadn't anyone hadn't had a chance to see that. It was a pretty good cosplay, too. Yeah, definitely. It was mm. really awesome. I don't know how those people do it. As you've heard a million times, yeah. I'm like, yeah, I can't put two sticks together, so, you know, <laughs> let alone make a costume like that. I was going to say, you can't put two sticks together, let alone get your wife to let you buy all the materials you need <laughs> yeah, to right. put together the friggin' ombre headdress and a scepter and yeah, that's, anything that's like that. That's not happening. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, goodness. <laughs> they officially announced it on the battle plan this week that Elisa Melendez <laughs> has joined the Gearbox team mm -hmm. uh, as the media manager. Yes. And the whole reasoning behind this is that they want to go ahead and start streaming a whole bunch more because they've been finding that they enjoy it and they like the mm -hmm. format of you know giving out information that way. Uh, so she's there to make it better, expand upon it, and... Uh, Get everybody on board, basically. Yeah. So, obviously, as a community, we'd love to welcome her aboard and can't wait to see what she's got in store for us. Definitely. Yeah, she was even in the stream tonight throwing out uh, the raffle prizes, the uh, PAX Mega Codes. I think it was kind of her first, like, dip the toe in the waters of the actual open Gearbox stream. And I got to say, I, I'm really enjoying the streams that they've been doing. It's just, you know, I'm not really, a, like, a get into the chat and do all that kind of stuff kind of guy, but it's... It's just a nice personal conversational feel to the whole stream where you get to just kind of basically sit down with the guys and listen to them talk about why they're doing what they're doing, all that kind of stuff. And then they also brought up that uh, the very next one they have is going to be about the Thrall Rebellion. Mm -hmm. uh, they want to go into more Borderlands um, streams and get back to some of their roots to let everybody know they haven't forgotten, obviously. Yep. And then they also said, uh, you know, the new character releases will be done via the streams mm -hmm. as well as other projects and or uh, Gearbox um, titles. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd definitely be interested in seeing maybe some, like, high-level gameplay from older titles. I, I know we mentioned this before we went on the air, but I'd love to see people getting back into... Brothers in Arms, Hell's Highway. If they had like a like a retro Thursday, hey, maybe a throwback Thursday. You can play with the devs on that. Because I know there were some multiplayer achievements on that, but by the time I got into the game, it was I mean it was it was an older game, so the multiplayer was just not there. It'd be fun to hop back on there and pl play around with the devs, even though I'm sure they'd just kick our butts. But Still. Yeah, still fun times. Yeah. It's still something to this day I have not gotten to do because I miss every single player at the devs event for anything. Yeah, yeah. I swear it's planned to just never allow me to do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, goodness. But speaking of streams, oh, yeah. guys and gals, we did it. We stayed up. We finally did we it. we didn't do the podcast until after the stream this time. <laughs> it's a miracle. I yes. can't believe it. 
Now, I will say, I'm not doing this every time, Gearbox. Yeah. So, you know, we, uh, we're we hoping we can work out some kind of arrangement here. <laughs> uh, yeah, recording these streams late at night. I mean, it's not super late, but it's later than we normally do. It's just not, it, it just doesn't feel right. But no, Something's off about it. It's yeah. dark and I'm scared. Well, yeah. you're, in, you're in an even darker corner of the basement now. It's... I mean, it's well, it's getting know, dark and creepy back there. I'm, I'm yeah, not. Yeah, the I'm things not gonna in lie. the basement are going to be getting to me soon. I might not even finish this podcast before I'm eating alive down here. When so. I see the blanket start to rise out of the doorway, I'm I'm going to let you know so you can punch that ghost in the face. But thank you, I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this stream was all about the October 13th big patch that's coming out, and they had all kinds of character changes, all kinds of announcements coming out, and they said that. Next week in the battle plan, we'll be getting the full patch notes for this patch that'll be coming in two weeks' time. So they said, in addition to all the things that we're going to go down for you right now, there's going to be even more stuff. There's going to be gear changes, because they didn't mention anything about gear this time. So if you guys remember, one of our first episodes was very, very stats and news heavy and bloated out to like double size. This one might do that as well, and then I'm betting there's going to be even more next week. Well, you know there is, because the yeah. AMA is tomorrow, for all you boys and girls who didn't know that. That's what true. time is that again, Matt? That's uh, 12 p.m. Pacific time, which is going to be 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Oh, man. So if you can catch that, make sure you do, because they're going to be answering questions from you, the listener and or viewer and or Gearbox fan. Mm -hmm. Yep, so if you guys have any questions about the kind of stuff we're going to go over right now, make sure you, well, you'll have a couple hours after the uh, after the podcast drops to listen to this, formulate your questions, and then jump in the AMA. Precisely. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Yeah, so this stream featured Joe King and Randy Varnell, as usual, and with them, again, was Grant K.O. I had pronounced it Cow last time because I wasn't sure how to pronounce his name, but they said K.O. on the stream, so my apologies to you, sir for mispronouncing your name. All right, so big global changes they talked about right away. I know you're going to love this, and Player X is going to love this. There's not going to be any more allied collision detection. So you're not going to be running into your buddies. You're not going to be shooting your buddies in the back. You're not going to be tripping over the minions when you're trying to get down the stairs in Echelon. None of that stuff. That was the first oh, big announcement. God. And everybody in chat went frickin' nuts. I went a little bit nuts, but I had to stuff my nose back in the notebook and write it down. Yes. Oh, it's like the, it's like the gorilla off your back, man. Yeah. yeah. Can't tell you how many times I've been destroyed because of a player getting in my way when I'm mm -hmm. trying to cast something, and they ruin everything. Yeah. And they, they specifically mentioned for Montanas who have – Amico in their back pocket, and you're trying to back up while your gun's spinning away and everyone's shooting you in the face, but you're tripping over that little mushroom dude, and he just won't get out of your damn way because he's trying to hide behind you too. And, yeah, there have been so many times, as any character, I'm up there shooting the enemies in the face. Oh, i got to back off. Why can't I turn around? Oh, it's a little blade bot. Oh, it's, it's Player X just hugging me from behind and I can't move. Let me jump over it. I can't really do that either. Now I'm dead. Yeah, or even worse, you hire the two double thralls and you're oh, in there God. making a push yeah. and you're like, okay, things are hurting a little bit. I need to back up. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden you're being pushed forward right into the sentry yeah. uh, bot. And you, oh, what's this? Oh, hi guys. Do you realize that you're killing me? Thank you. <laughs> or you're, you're lining up your ult for the shot on the sentry that's unshielded. Oh. And, oh, the thrall does his little little juke like 20 feet to the right, and you shoot him right in the back. And, well, that was a waste. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. So no more of that. None of that. They said everybody's, well, as we know, everybody's been complaining and crying about that. So that's that's gone. Fantastic. What yeah. a great change. Yep. Good job, Gearbox. <laughs> so, yeah, in addition to that, they said another one of the global changes they're making is that they said the minions kind of like lose. I mean, there's basically no point to them around end game. You can just come in and just kill a wave like nobody's business. So they said starting with this patch on the 13th, uh, minions are going to get stronger every 120 seconds. So every two minutes, the minions are going to ramp up. And they said it's not going to be like some huge major change. You're not going to be standing in there fighting for like five minutes to clear the minion wave. But it'll crank them up a little more. It'll make them more of a distraction. You know, you have to pay more attention to the minions versus just, oh, it's minions, ah, they're dead, whatever. Is that just their health or is that going to be their damage as well? It just said minions stronger, so I would assume health and damage. 
Okay, because actually, you know, that can be a big deal towards the end of the game. That mm-hmm. could really um, affect the outcome of the whole thing. Because if yeah. you can get one wave towards the end of the match in on some sentry bot, mm-hmm. bam, that kind of damage going down plus a couple of you, that could yeah. that could actually be very beneficial. And and plus, it'll it'll help you push through to the end of the game when you you get him there, and then it's not going to be like, oh, the thorn came up and she just killed the minions. Now we have to run away inside of like two seconds. Mm-hmm. I, I think it's a good thing. I was a little, you know, iffy about it at first, but I think the positives overwhelm any kind of negative that that would have. Well, and I think by telling everyone that uh, they're not going to do it by some crazy large incremental amount yeah, that's yeah. going to make it. So, yeah, you're spending two minutes fighting one stinking wave trying right, to get right. them down. I, I think that's basically a calming effect for me anyway. That, mm-hmm. Okay. It's still not going to be like this huge issue, but maybe it's going to help me a little bit. Right, right. And kind of building off of that, the the not being able to clear minions in just the snap of your fingers, they said there's going to be a lot of nerfs or changes coming to people's AoEs. Uh, I know a couple of them they listed out directly here, but uh, they're talking about like Thorn's Blight, Oscar Mike's Frag Sendiary Grenades. Because as you know, as soon as you lay that down, the minion wave just stands in it and is dead like we said, in five to six seconds. Yeah, like when you stand in Oscar Mike's, you're dead in 10 to five seconds. For, for you every yeah. every day. <laughs> yeah, screw you, Oscar Mike. And anybody who plays Oscar Mike slash Joe, community manager guy, <laughs> Oscar Mike, how he, dare you, sir? He did, he did specifically say on the stream, oh, this makes me a little sad because you know I'm a Mike guy, but oh, yeah, I well, understand. Yeah, no. Good. Good. <laughs> Now, they did specify, because somebody asked Grant this later in, at, around the end of the stream, they said, what does that mean for Arendi? They said, well, Arendi is going to be the one that they're probably not going to touch with that. They want her to be kind of focused on that AOE shadow fire pillar. I was going to say, that's her bread and butter. That's her life. Yeah. So they said they're probably not going to touch that at all. So Arendi players, a.k.a. you, you can breathe a little bit of a sigh of relief on that, at least so far, unless... Well... I figured it wouldn't get touched because, as I just said, that's that's all she has. That's who she is. So if you get rid of that, she's, um, well, she's over. Yeah, that really is it because especially with the Gnosis, as soon as you hit your your Nullify, then your Shadow Fire is up again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like you said, I understand. Her whole game is doing Shadow Fire Pillars, so. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, next up, they went through just a ton of changes. They They posted up, like, little groups of, you know, four or five or two to three characters all together and went through their changes kind of one by one i'll try and breeze through them kind of as quick as i can and not dwell too much on the really small ones um, first up we got montana they said that when he does his lumberjack dash and runs into you and you bump into another battleborn that's not going to put the stun on you it's only when you run into a wall like how it's supposed to be i, I would assume because i mean there have been a couple matches especially like in echelon when everyone's piled up in the stairs and montana dashes into you knocks you back like half a foot into your buddy and you're both stunned and then everybody gets to just pile on you. I, I don't know. Yeah, that's no fun. Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. I thought that was a, a nice little change. Not something huge, but it makes you have to be better with your with your lumberjack dash instead of just, there's a pile of people. Nah, they're all stunned now. Mm-hmm. Another quick change for Benedict, his rocket launcher won't crit anymore, so you can't just be laying down crazy, ridiculous damage on people. They said they're going to bump up his damage, his base damage a little bit to make up for that, but they don't want people just just firing off on somebody's head and insta-killing people. Well, didn't they just recently buff his base damage, though? I mean, that was the whole point, was to kind of make him more effective. Yeah. I know in that last big patch, they buffed it, and then people were saying he was OP because he was doing too much damage now. Hence why I guess they just now went ahead and nerfed the crits yeah. to basically zero, right? Yeah, yeah. He he can't crit at all with Cannot that. Cannot crit with his uh, base damage attack. Right. So, I don't know. If they buff his base damage even more, they're just, I don't know. They're just, <laughs> just going to bring it back up to the same issue. Yeah. They, they said they were looking at it and, you know, wondering specifically how the crit stuff works. They said the numbers, out of all the rocket launcher shots that were made with Benedict, only 20% ever critted. So they think just to- taking that off, tweaking his damage up just just a touch would make up for that loss of DPS gotcha. there. Well, hopefully it uh, does, pans out. 
I have nothing wrong against Benedict. He doesn't really bother me that much. Yeah. Unless he's really good, and then I hate him. No, I hate any character who's really good. True. <laughs> uh, the next three are pretty much all AoE stuff. Uh, Ernest is getting his uh, grenade AoE down 10%. Oscar Mike's getting his frag Sandiary grenades AoE and the damage on that drop down. They said especially for that, they're trying to put it more in line with the nades on nades, which still nobody was picking to kind of make it a more even even choice. Then they said Whiskey Foxtrot's napalm duration is going down. They said the DPS on it is going up a little bit, but that was where you know he could shoot out his three sticky bombs and then just have a field of fire just, just everywhere. So again, again those all kind of go down into the trying to dial down the AoE madness that sometimes the game can become. The only th- other thing they announced for Whiskey Foxtrot, apparently this was a big deal, but people really hated having to pull the trigger each time you wanted to fire a burst. Oh yeah, I've, I've seen that on the forums quite a bit. And I don't understand that whatsoever. Just I, I'm making the motion right now. It's the tiniest little motion. Just flip your finger a little bit more. My finger hurts right now, man. You know how much Battleborn and Destiny and these other dang games have I been playing lately? Wah. My finger hurts, Matt. It's raw. My skin is raw. Call the wambulance. <laughs> but yeah, no they said cares. they said you can just hold down the trigger and empty his whole clip. Yeah, still in three round bursts, obviously. But they said, yeah, you can just point at somebody's head and just hold the trigger down till they're dead. Oh, gee, well, I, I don't know. I, I'm not a fan of it, but apparently everyone else was not a fan of the way it was before. I don't mind it. I think it brings them closer to uh, Oscar Mike. Yeah, it makes it makes them a little easier to play, I guess. Next up, we got Thorn. They said they're upping the accuracy on her uh, bow attack just because everyone is basically using her as a spellcaster, and I admit I've done it a couple times too. They're also reducing the charge time on the bow to get the curse on it just so, to make people actually use her more as a sniper character instead of just, I'm here for Blight and Volley and my ult, and then if they're on cooldown, I'm just going to run away. That's very much what she was supposed to originally be, was a sniper character. Yeah. But, like you just stated, that's not how almost anybody was using her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I've tried to, but, I mean, A, I'm not a good sniper anyway, but I just I just couldn't hack it, and it was just so much easier to just run up, put Blight down, and, okay, the minions are dead. I got my XP, I'm running away. Hop, 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 go away. There you go. Mm-hmm. They said a decent amount of changes for Boulder. Uh, his ultimate, his, his runes of power... The cooldown on that's going from 30 seconds to 50 seconds, which I think was needed because I've played Boulder, you know, not a ton, but it seems like that ultimate is up all the time. And when I'm playing against a Boulder, he always has his sparkly eyes and is murdering me all the time. They also said they're augmenting his Boulder Dash. It's going to give you rage by default, so the augment that you could pick to give you that, it's going to extend the range of it. And they said they're going to make it a little bit steerable, too. So you're not just locked nice. into going straight into the wall or straight off the cliff. That was needed. You can kind of, yeah, try and save yourself. I've seen a lot of boulders making uh, the miss and yeah. <laughs> flying off in a random direction. Yeah, it was, I felt mm. bad for them, and then I'd murder them. <laughs> Except that's a lie, because you can't murder boulder. That's right. It's a myth. He doesn't die. If it was me, then I would get murdered. Any boulder yes. we face, though, he lives forever. Yeah, he lives forever. Now, they announced a whole bunch of changes for Shane and Oryx. I'm going to try and just blaze through them as fast as I can. They said uh, anytime her shield is up, so anytime Oryx is with her, she's getting 20% damage reduction to make her a little bit more tanky. They announced that uh, the Aura of Annoyance ability that she's got, the damage on that's going up. Uh, Stealth Strike, so when she goes invisible and comes back out, that that final impact of it is going to slow like automatically now. Apparently it was an augment you could take before. Now that augment's going to slow him a lot more. And then her don't stop running, which is when the shield breaks, when Oryx isn't around, she would get a movement speed buff for a little while. Now it's going to last a little bit longer, so you can you can get the heck out of there. Once, you're, once your tanking is technically done, you can just clear right out. I don't play her too much, and I don't really have an issue with her, so hey, those sound fantastic. Yeah. I told Danny, I was like, hey, you're probably going to like that, because she's a big Shane and Oryx player. Mm-hmm couple little health augments for Galilea. They're increasing her base HP by 300, and then the augment she can pick to have health regeneration, I'm assuming that's in her goop pool, the uh, health regen on that's going to go up. Just a little bit more survivability. It was needed. 
Yeah. Uh, I've been playing her quite a bit lately, and while I still hold that she's a little too versatile, mm-hmm. um, I have been finding that the HP side is a little low for what they want you to do with her. You know, yeah. get in there, attack, and you know, be a frontline kind of character. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's definitely definitely less durable than like a boulder. So I think just a little bit of a tweak up like that was was needed. A couple changes for my girl Reyna, and they showed off a skin for her called Vampirate, which was pretty awesome. They said her lockdown augment, the slow is going to be reduced on that because people were just able to stack that slow. And then the plasma burst radius, the radius on that's going to go up, so you're going to have more AoE abilities with her with that. Then next up, we got Kelvin, the stun that he's got on his sublimation. They're upping the stun again because they dialed it down quite a bit before. They're going to up that back up because he, he's their, I think they said their stun tank. That's what he they wanted him to do. So I would agree with that. Yeah. Once again, I was playing with him a little bit this weekend, and I'd go through and stun a few folk, but the, I swear, by the time I clicked out of the sublimate, they were already unstunned and running away, so yeah. it's like, I don't know, almost pointless. Mm-hmm. Now, next two I know you're going to be all over. Uh, Galt, his scrap trap, is now going to slow people instead of stun them outright. His shotgun damage is going up 15%, and his quick melee damage is going down by 20%. Because they said the quick melee, I understand, because it pops out real quick. You can really hammer on people with that. But I know you got strong feelings about your boy Galt. Yeah, the quick melee I agree with. Uh, it was a little bit too powerful for what mm. it was supposed to be. But the taking away the, the stun and giving him a slow effect, I think that's a terrible idea. I really do because mm. he's not t- a tank. He's He does not. He cannot take a whole bunch of hits. So, okay, let me draw this guy into me. Oh, look, he's just going to murder my face now because he's not stunned. He's, mm. oh, hey, hi. In fact, I would, I would argue that most characters would be... A, pleasantly surprised that you pull him into me <laughs> oh well hey thank you i'm glad i'm close to you and now i can murder you with my face or my hands or my teeth whatever it is you're killing me with yeah i can uh, i can kind of see that i would think the only thing to counter that would with is that you know generally when you're playing galt or when i'm playing galt you're in the back lines anyway so when you're pulling somebody through they're going oh my god there's now there's a shane and oryx behind me now there's a a reina a melka so I have to just turn around and run away. I'm not focused on, I'm just going to kill the Galt and then make my way around the map to try and get away. Mm-hmm. I, I see where they're, they're, put, yeah, they're pushing you to play in that specific category where yeah. you stay in the back, you pull the enemy in and allow you and your team to down them, mm-hmm. but you're giving the enemy a, a slight chance to defend themselves and get the heck out of dodge. Because yeah. it is pretty annoying when you're grabbed by that Galt and... That stun was like two full seconds. So you'd be sitting there taking damage. Okay, I'm probably going to live. Okay. And then that last second comes and, uh, and now I'm dead. And I had no chance to do anything. Oh, I, I get that. But yeah. on the same end, some characters were able to get out of it almost immediately anyway. Like a Rendy's. Mm-hmm. Those little fools were always able to just nullify and yeah. it didn't matter. For them, you know, it was just a fun little game or joke. So True, true. But the damage buff on the shotgun by 15% is nice. I see what they're trying mm. to do, you know, compensate with the slow, give you a little extra damage so you can make that little extra push to get them down. Mm. But I'm not sure if that 15% will be enough. Well, time will tell, obviously. Yeah, yeah. They said that is going to stack with uh, his ultimate. I mean, obviously he uses two shotguns. Yeah. But mm-hmm. somebody posed that question in the chat, so they wanted to go ahead and clarify that. Awesome. Up next, your girl Phoebe. She's getting 200 more HP. And then her, her blade rush is going to fire immediately instead of kind of having like a warm-up to it. Very and the, nice. And then the cooldown on that is going down about 15%. So you'll be Beautiful. able to use that a little bit more. So now I can be even better. Oh, why would I play anybody else? Just be Phoebe until they nerf her. Just be Phoebe forever. Bye, Gaul. Bye, Randy. Bye, Alani. Here you go. Said my farewells. I guess I have to be the healer from now on. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> you guys hate me healing anyway, so... <laughs> I don't have any heals for you, dude. Sorry. At least I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. All right, coming down to the last few here. El Dragon, they're going to make him a little more fragile. His HP is going down about 138, and they're reducing the his Dragon Splash, which is the AoE, so again in the AoE range here. And then his Clap Damage is also going down. So he's not going to be just, as soon as he gets in, Clap forever, you're dead. He, you'll have a little bit more chance to fight back. He's a little more fragile, a little less 
like total AOE madness. I hate all dragon, so I'll just plead the fifth. It seems like they wanted to buff up the melee guys a little bit. Rask getting an HP increase, about 200, but his Dreadwind duration is going down, so you can't just sit in the Wrath Blender all day long. Thank goodness. Mm. I'm glad he's getting an HP buff. He yeah. deserves it, yeah. and he also deserves a freaking nerf to that Dreadwind. Mm. Yeah, even playing as a Wrath. Well, as you know, level 1 and level 2, you're going in there, and it's just you just can't do anything. You go in for a few swipes, and then you got to run away. So mm -hmm. it's going to have a little bit more staying power. Then Deandy as well is getting a health increase by 250 HP. And then her bonus when she comes out of stealth and gets the uh, the attack and skill damage bonus, they said that's going to last a little bit longer. They're upping that by about 66% to make her a little more useful. Well, I was uh, up against the Deandy the other night who was damn well useful enough. Yeah, she, yeah. Uh, she was owning it. That's a, I don't know. At the moment, I would say I don't like it, but <laughs> I don't play Dandy enough to know if that's actually legit or not. So. You say, tonight Tonight you don't like it, but when Danny's playing Dandy on our team, you're going to like it. I'm going to love it, yes. Yeah. I kind of agree. About 80% of Dandy's I don't have a problem with, but then there's always that one that just... And it's every time I'm playing Alani, too. She'll just come in and just... I'm just wrecked. I can't. I can't do anything. She's all over me everywhere I go. Then last but not least, our boy Caldarius, uh, his his double jumps, he's not going to be able to do that when he's slowed, so slows will actually affect him instead of, oh, I'm walking slow, but I'm just hopping away like an idiot. And then they also said that this is going to be annoying. His flashbang cooldown is going to be reduced for each enemy that he hits. So when he's shooting it on the, on the minion waves, be prepared because he's going to shoot it at you, then he's going to shoot it at your buddy, and he's going to shoot at you like six more times. You're going to be blind the whole match. It's going to be nuts. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I don't like seeing things anyway. Yeah. I've always had this great thought that I should just stab my eyes out permanently because that's cool. <laughs> that's fun. Uh -huh. Did you notice that they had two new taunts for Montana and Oscar Mike? I did notice that. That they sneak peeked. Okay. There were some of the of the character screens they were, th they were showing were like, hey, look, it's a new taunt, and it was sometimes an old taunt, but a lot of times it was new taunts. They showed off some of the some of the Halloween skins. Like I said, the Reina one, I think there was one for Alani and Pendles that I saw. I didn't get like too good a look at them because, again, I had my, my nose and my notebook and my pencil just going furiously trying to cram all these notes into this tiny freaking space that I left available for it. Good job, Matt. <laughs> I posted a picture of that on Twitter if anyone wants to see my ridiculous tiny handwriting. But yeah, they showed off a bunch of new skins and taunts that are be coming down the pipe. Uh, it almost seems to me, I wanted to bring this up last week, it almost seems like there's been a couple taunts that have like snuck into the store that I don't remember seeing before, and then I would load up the store and, what's this weird like leg drop taunt for Reyna? What's this boulder taunt? I don't remember seeing those or hearing them actually announced. I don't know if they're being sneaky poos or maybe... I just haven't been paying attention. It seems that way to me, though. Yeah, I haven't really been paying too close of attention, so it's definitely possible they've just been sneaking them in. Mm -hmm. All I know is I hope they don't try to just sneak in the Halloween costumes. No, I... And I hope they don't wait till the October 13th patch to put those suckers in either. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep harping on it. I want my Halloween skins. <laughs> Where's my Halloween skins? <laughs> Gearbox. Well, see, it should cheer you up because there, there was specifically an Alani one that they showed, so... You at least have one Halloween character to play. That's right. I can't wait either. So yeah, that's it for the stream. Like I said, they gave away some of the PAX Mega Codes in that stream. Basically, you just had to be in there to win. They auto auto picked from whoever was in the room. So next time you see them streaming, make sure you jump in there. You can get all that good stuff. Uh, of course, if you've got any questions on anything that we went over, anything they went over in the stream, they're doing an AMA on Reddit today at 12 p.m. Pacific time, which is 3 p.m. Eastern time. So if you grabbed up this podcast right when we dropped it, you got plenty of time to get over there and ask them any questions you got. And, of course, speaking of feedback, it's time for the mailbag. <laughs> this question comes from Danny, our audio person. Do you think Battleborn should go cross-platform in order to solve the matchmaking issues? What do you think, Eric? Well, I would, of course, say yes, but it's never going to happen. And mm -hmm. it's not because Battleborn or Gearbox doesn't want to. It's because... Sony and Xbox and PC have never played nice. Mm. Uh, however, that's been changing with the Xbox and PC, hence, well, obvious reasons. Mm. Um, but it, it's never going to change. Uh, I do not see Sony 
hopping on board the cross-platform bandwagon. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yes, Danny, I really think it would benefit greatly from being Mm cross-platform. However, I don't see it happening because Sony's not going to play nice and do that. Yeah, I, I will say yes and no for a slightly different reason. I mean, yes, because having us all in one community would be amazing. Your matchmaking times would be so much faster. But the only cross-platform I could see them doing, because I've seen it happen before, is with PC. And you can't cross consoles and PC. You just can't. The only way to do it successfully, though, is if you have a keyboard and mouse application for your console. And even then, you're still going to be a little bit behind just because PC's power can be vastly superior to that of the console, yeah. just hands down. Yeah, the one game that I have played cross-platform, PS4 and PC, is Rocket League. And when you're playing that game, you know when you're up against a PC player because he will hit all the perfect shots. He he has the perfect aim. He's he's dead on every time. So doing that in Battleborn and getting headshotted all the time by every single player on the other team would just be maddening. I mean, you can do it, but you can't do it. You, you just can't do that. Mm-hmm. I would agree. I think overall PC just is in a different world on its own. Mm-hmm. But no matter what, it won't happen because the consoles will always be consoles and fight one another. And Yeah. And yeah, uh, I, I would love to be able to play with Xbox players, especially since oh, they apparently had the, had the full capture and meltdown cues. That would have been nice. But like you said, it's nobody's ever going to play nice. It's all just going to be haggard. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, thanks for the question, Danny. And if any of you have any questions for us, as always, you can email us at info at thirdshift.me. We're on Facebook under Third Shift. We're on Twitter as Third Shift Me. That's Third Shift M-E. We're Third Shift Me on pretty much all the other socials out there as well. If you need any direct links to those, go to the website at thirdshift.me. Of course, this podcast drops every Friday, so we'll see you guys again on October 7th for the next episode. This podcast drops on iTunes, on Stitcher, on on Podomatic, we're on YouTube, we're on Google Play Music. And I did want to mention that there was, you know, a little bit of a snafu with uh, getting getting notifications about the podcast to Reddit, the forums, and YouTube. So if you like what we're doing and you want to get this podcast on the regular, make sure you're subscribing to us on any of those platforms. You'll see us as soon as we upload. Yes, please subscribe. The subscription clown. (laughs) So no, on a serious note, as always, we'd like to thank you guys, the listeners, for tuning in, keeping us going on the old uh, Pato Castos. And uh, (laughs) it's late. I'm sorry, boys and girls. It's very late. I'm losing my mind right now. (laughs) It's too too damn late for podcasts. Uh, And as usual, guys, we thank you for listening. You guys make this show what it is. Yep. We hope that you enjoyed, and uh, we're looking forward to hearing any kind of feedback you got for us. Absolutely. Just throw it out there, and we will be happy to respond. Exactly. And with that, Matt, hey. don't, don't forget, forget to say. say. Shut up and sit down.